a happy Easter to you and a blessed, blessed, grace-filled, divine mercy Sunday. Here at St. Faustina, it is our Super Bowl. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, we go all out for Divine Mercy Sunday, for we are indeed a center of divine mercy. We do have St. Faustina with us, her relic. So uh, after Mass, for those who wish, especially those who are visiting us on this occasion, if you wish to leave uh, intercession, feel free to do so, write your intention and leave it there as we ask for her intercession. Last night, we have an amazing and, and spirit-filled Divine Mercy Fest. And the pastor go all the way out. I am telling you, I did something unthinkable. I stood on the stage and sung the whole song in front of the large crowd, which I've never did before. And uh, I tell you, some Deacon, Deacon Randy said that I sound like Frank Sinatra. <laughs> now, somebody else said something. Somebody else said... Father, oh, yeah, you, you, you sound more like Elvis Presley. <laughs> the rest, they were in silence and awe. <laughs> they couldn't believe how courageous this priest who couldn't sing well would sing in front of everybody. It was beautiful. That's divine mercy. We go all the way out. On this day, early 1930, Jesus appeared to a Polish nun and, uh, and a mystic. And Jesus told St. Faustina, I desire that the Feast of Mercy be a refuge and shelter for all souls, especially the soul of poor sinners. I desire that the second Sunday of Easter be celebrated as divine mercy. On that day, says the Lord, the very depths of my tender mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean of graces on those souls who approach my fount of mercy. On that day, I open all the divine floodgates through which graces flow. Wow! In the year, the jubilee year of 2000, Pope St. John Paul II canonized St. Faustina and officially established for the Catholic Church the second Sunday of Easter as Divine Mercy Sunday. Today is a feast, brothers and sisters. Think of it like, uh, like the occasion of Easter, Christmas, birthday, when you gather together with your loved ones. You eat a lot more than the regular day. This is what happened. The Lord marked this day to pour out His grace on all those souls who come to Him. And I want to draw your attention to the word that the Lord said. The world will not know peace until it come to trust in my mercy. And if you have the image of divine mercy, which I invite you to do if you don't, the Lord specifically instructed St. Faustina that there is a signature on that image that says, Jesus, I trust in you. And I want to reflect on that on Divine Mercy Sunday. There's so much to talk about. But allow me to draw your attention today to the doubting Thomas in the Gospel reading. So, after the death of Jesus, the apostle was scared. They feel failures, betrayed. They betrayed the Lord. They scared. They locked themselves out in the room. They isolated. And Jesus appeared to them, peace be with you. And he showed them his wounds. And Thomas, one of the twelve, wasn't there. So can you imagine the apostles went to look for them? said, Thomas, we found the Lord. Thomas heard it from them. Thomas saw the peace and the joy in them. But he didn't believe. And he said this to the, uh, to the, the, the rest of the apostle. He said that 
unless I put my unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Does it sound familiar? In other words, doubting Thomas is very practical. You want me to believe in God? In someone who comes back to life? Give me empirically, empirically, and scientific, scientifically based data, then I will believe. Brothers and sisters, I allow me, I want to appeal especially to our young people. Dear young people, you, this culture is driving that at you. You have to be able to see, touch, smell in order to believe. But think for a moment. Here in this church, we ce I celebrate a lot of wedding, and I love it. You know, on the wedding day, the, the, the husband and the wife stand in front of each other, and they say, they make the promise, I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and honor you all the days of my life. Then I bless the ring, and they put it on each other's finger, and they said, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. Imagine we change that. Instead of the ring, I will bless the watch. <laughs> and the wife will put it on his wrist and said, receive this James Bond's watch. <laughs> Wherever you go, the location will show up on my cell phone. <laughs> Some of you like that. Whoever you talk to, and whatever you say, it will be recorded. And quarterly, we will analyze the data to see if we truly love and honor and trust each other. Can you believe that? Or can you believe when maybe you have a headache and your mom, you have a fever and you have a headache and your mom said, why don't you take these two Tylenol to lower the fever? And you said, wait, mom. I want you to print out for me every little chemical that is in that pills. How does it interact with the blood vessel and the brain? And also print out for me how many people have drink that and have gotten better, and how many people have gotten worse from that. Then I will drink it. Mom said, forget it, just get sick. <laughs> Can you imagine the frustration, right? The frustration, can you imagine with that couple, the intensity of jealousy and frustration that they would have in that relationship? Because there is a language that is beyond the shallow, empirical data. There is a language of the heart. There is a language of love. And there is a language of intellect and reason. And when it comes to encountering the risen Lord, we have to see him because it is a spiritual reality. We have to see him with the language of faith and trust. And so when Jesus reappeared to doubting Thomas, who is very practical, who is asking for empirical data, Jesus was very patient. Peace be with you, Thomas. Come, says the Lord. Said the Lord Jesus to Thomas. He meets us where we're at. He said, put your finger here and see my hands. And bring your hand and put it in my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. And Thomas in that moment, Brothers and sisters, I want to ask you, did he do that? Then he's like, okay, let me see. <laughs> let me put it in to see how deep that was. Does it go all the way to your heart? He did. He made the most profound profession of faith in the Gospel of John. My Lord and my God. That's the language of faith.
Now, you may say, but Father Dad, Jesus talked to him. And Jesus said, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and believe. Why is that? Because it is the grace of faith and trust. Why is that? Because even though we do not see with the empirical data, we have trust and we believe and blessed are you. Brothers and sisters, before Mass, we have the Eucharistic adoration. And in a little bit, I will lift up and elevate the Eucharist. And believe it or not, many Catholics still do not believe. But for those who are willing to see with the eyes of faith and believe and trust, there is ocean of grace for that soul. The Lord Jesus told St. Faustina, my soul, it pained my soul that the souls do not trust in my mercy. And as for so little... When I have this whole ocean of grace and mercy to pour out on those souls. When it's so difficult for us to understand, to believe, it we say, Jesus, I trust in you. I learned my biggest lesson of trust when I was, I was six years old. My family had left Vietnam by boat. My little sister was three months old, and I have three brothers in between. The engine died. Our boat was floating on the ocean. After a week, it flew back. It, it, the wind took it back. The communists came, put my father in another prison. My mother, with my brothers and sisters, three months old, in another prison. And we were there for two months and a half. Every single dollar we had, we invested on that trip. By the time we were released, we got back to our house. Our grandpa came out to see us. Literally, we looked like malnutrition children. We were shaking, skin and bones, only to find out dad was in another prison. Zero dollar all spent on that trip. Grandpa met us as a door, took our hands, took us straight to the altar, and we pray together. That's trust. That's faith. And St. Faustina said this, when my soul is tormented, my thought is this, Jesus is good and full of mercy. And even the world falls apart under my feet, I will not stop trusting him. Brothers and sisters, we are all sin and broken and hurt one way or another. But God never fails us. On this Divine Mercy Sunday, let us go to him and let us say, Jesus, I trust in you.